Skip, last night's Bills Bengals game came to an abrupt halt when Bills safety DeMar Hamlin collapsed on the field. Hamlin suffered cardiac arrest and was given CPR on the field to restore his heartbeat before being transferred to a local hospital, where right now he is in critical condition. The game was suspended just over an hour before being officially postponed. Skip, what was going through your mind during all of this? Jen, allow me to say up front that I apologize for what we're going to set out to do here today if it offends anyone because we're, we're going to try to do the show pretty much as we usually do the show. But I'll admit up front, I'm still shook up by what happened last night to DeMar Hamlin. In fact, I'm still wrecked. In fact, I'm not sure I'm capable of doing this show today. But after barely sleeping on it, I decided to give it a try. Maybe I'll fail, maybe we will fail, but we're going to try. We wrestled through much of the night whether to even do a show today because it felt like in our minds, we almost can't win with this because the last thing we wanna to try to do is come off as insensitive to what this young man is going through in a life or death situation. The last thing we wanna do is offend anyone by trying to do what we always do, which is talk about sports. As this show goes on, we're going to try to talk about a little bit of sports, but we're going to continue to talk about what happened to this young man last night and try to sort back through it with help from you and the audience. And we ask you now, if you'd like to tweet us your emotions of the night and of this morning about what happened to DeMar Hamlin, please do so. You can tweet us at at undisputed, at undisputed, and I will be sharing some of your tweets and your emotions as we share our experience of last night through this very difficult morning for all of us. Obviously, my partner Shannon Sharp is not here today. I look forward to seeing him tomorrow. But I would like to work back through what I went through last night as I watched this unfold. This was obviously, you could argue, the biggest Monday night football game of the year. It got off to a rip-roaring start. Joe Burrow goes right up the field and scores, and it's seven to nothing. Then Buffalo gets a field goal, and it's seven to three. And at about the six-minute mark of the first quarter, as you well know, Joe Burrow completed a pass to T. Higgins, went for 13 yards, to the Buffalo 48, and DeMar Hamlin, made what at first would be pretty routine Higgins. And as you well know, DeMar Hamlin bounced up from the tackle for just a, a moment. Then he teetered and he went down. This was pretty stunning, but we see so many injuries in the sport of football that obviously at that moment, it didn't seem all that out of the ordinary until that happened. And before I go into that, let me put DeMar Hamlin in some perspective for you. He's 24 years of age. He's out of McKeesport, Pennsylvania, went to Pitt was drafted in the sixth round two drafts ago. So this is his second year. And the book on him was, coming out of Pitt, that he would probably just be an average backup player in the National Football League and a special teams player. And because of an injury to Micah Hyde, which took place 
in the second game of the year, DeMar Hamlin got his opportunity in the National Football League, and he seized it, and he ran with it in ways he didn't run that great before he was drafted. He was 4-6 in the 40. But he took off. Maybe you weren't that aware of him, but he has played huge for the Buffalo Bills this year. He is second on the team in tackles, playing in the safety spot. And obviously, Buffalo is one of the best teams, if not the best team, in pro football and was setting out at Cincinnati to prove just that. This was a great, huge stage for this young man. Reportedly, much of his family was there to support him. God bless them. And then that happened. Unprecedented happened. I have been covering this league. I've been writing about, commenting on this league for about 50 years. So I've been there and done all of that. I've seen it all. And trust me, I've never, ever seen anything like that happen. Before you knew it, an ambulance was on the field, not just a stretcher, not just a cart, an ambulance. That's when you knew this was different. Reportedly, CPR was immediately administered because he suffered cardiac arrest. And now his teammates, and pretty soon also the Bengals, are gathered around looking into the face of a young man, age 24, who is literally fighting for his life. CPR. I don't want to speculate on what happened or why it happened or how it happened or what the, the situation was because I don't know. I had my thoughts, but I don't know. Nobody knows yet exactly what transpired, what caused that to happen, but it happened. And those young men around that young man got shook way worse than I'm shook right now. And they were so shaken that they were unable to play football for the rest of that night, as you know. But this went on and on and on to the point where unprecedented turned into, oh my God, what, what has happened? In all my years, I've never seen anything like this because obviously I've seen horrific injuries. I wasn't there the night that Daryl Stingley got paralyzed by Jack Tatum. It was a preseason game, August of 1978. But I was watching Monday Night Football when a guy who became a very good friend of mine, Joe Theismann, got his leg broken by Lawrence Taylor. Compound fracture where the bone came through the skin. It was horrific. And the game stopped for a while, but the show must go on. And that was always the NFL's attitude is, next man up, the show must go on. Maybe we've had an awakening here because the show didn't go on last night for the first time in the history of this league that a life and death situation took precedence over next man up football. So at that point, I had tweeted twice already. My first tweet ended with that I just said a prayer for DeMar and his family. My second tweet was about so many horrific injuries, but this is very different in all caps. And then came my third tweet, which I believe was widely misconstrued, misinterpreted. I don't follow what's happening on Twitter. I just tweet. But my boss here at Fox called and said, hey, people are really reacting strongly to your tweet. Maybe you should clarify, which I immediately did. But my first tweet was simply, as a journalist, I was putting myself in the heads of the NFL